Let's give our confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Let's greet each other. One soul is more precious than a thousand. Today's message is entitled, The Meeting That Saves. Recently, an Am American best-selling author and famous influencer, Mark Manson, he is someone who has worldwide influence. And on his YouTube channel, he released a video. And the title is quite shocking. The title was, I traveled to the most depressed country in the world. He said he traveled to the most depressed country in the world. And where is that country? It's our country. It was Korea. This video was about how he visited Korea and talked to many people and how he looked into the issue of depression in Korean society. Korea, he says, has incredibly high rates of anxiety, depression, alcoholism, and even high suicide rates. And in order to know the cause of that, he said he had come to Korea. And Manson said that Korea is at the center of attention because of its economy and cultural influence. But it suffers from deep depression and loneliness. And he goes on to say that it is because Korea maximizes the bad aspects of Korea's Confucian culture and the shortcomings of capitalism. He, he said that Korea, Koreans set a specific framework to judge others and they maximize the shame that comes when they fail to stick to that framework and approach everything centered on competition. In other words, due to excessive competition, and if, if they cannot get 100 points, then they have failed, and it is a place where only the fittest survive. And this is deeply related to depression and always make people feel like failure. This was Manson's diagnosis of Korean society. Although this may be true or not, but yet it still, regardless of that, raises awareness within us. Even in our society, there, uh, the term hikikomori, which, is, which, is, which means becoming a reclusive loner, which was popularly known in Japan, is also continuing to increase in Korea. And so, it is directly related to Korea, but being a reclusive loner, people who cannot adapt to social life and live confined to their homes. The culture of, of being alone or solo culture. And there are many reasons for that. There are domestic abuse, game addiction, bullying, and maladaption to society. These are some main causes that have caused people to become reclusive loners. And also, according to statistics, there are about 500,000 young adults in Korea who are literally simply resting without doing anything in their homes. And among them, 240,000 are reclusive young adults. They're all alone at home. In modern society, as it progresses, people are avoiding socializing with others and are more prevalent to become alone. 
not too long ago, if you were to go to a restaurant by yourself, they, there were many menus that wouldn't serve unless you would come with more than two people. Whether it's bulgogi, they, they wouldn't serve a single serving. But nowadays, it's all allowed so that people can just eat by themselves. It's the same thing as Japan now. As time progresses, everything becomes isolated and fundamentally, people are avoiding interpersonal relationships and if they do have these relationships, it becomes competitive and hurtful meetings. As a result, this leads to isolation and a state of depression. Therefore, what is today's message title? We must have the meeting that saves. We must save others. A meeting that saves. All meetings that Jesus showed were meetings that saved lives. In today's text, there was a demon-possessed individual who was living a miserable life, disconnected from his family and society. But after meeting Jesus, a complete 180-degree change occurs in his life. In other words, healing and restoration took place. He became whole again. He became normal again. May all the people that you and I meet, may they become like the young adult whose life changed after meeting Jesus. May all the lives of all believers of Yewon Church have the work in which Jesus' power of life is realistically relayed to all those that you meet. And that is the life that enlarges the place of your life's tent. And it is a life that establishes an eternal partisan. Through today's message, may in every footstep of your life, may there be life-saving changes and dynamics in the name of the Lord. Point number one, the eyes to see the field spiritual reality. Verses 1 to 2, they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. The disciples who had experienced Jesus' supernatural miracles calming the storm now crossed the Sea of Galilee and came to the region of Gerasenes where Gentiles resided. As soon as they stepped off the boat, they encountered a man possessed by unclean spirits. He was a young adult. The scripture passage says that he was possessed by unclean spirits. He came to Jesus and the disciples. Through the previous events of the, of the storm, Jesus opened our eyes of faith to see problems and incidents spiritually. Even if windstorms may come against us, we do not see the windstorm. But we see how Jesus solved that problem. We have to open our spiritual eyes to see that. What kind of faith was that? What kind of faith did Jesus have? Faith that confronts head on. It wasn't an avoidance faith, but a faith that confronts head on. And today, through the following passage, he opens another set of eyes, the eyes to perceive the spiritual reality of most people have the eyes to only think about their emotions, their feelings, to make judgments and decisions on based on their own thinking. But the Bible tells us not to do that, but it tells us to open this, our spiritual eyes to be able to interpret spiritually. Verses 3 to 5, He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. It is truly an unfortunate sight. This man that is seized by demons, and he was demon-possessed because he was seized by evil spirits. He couldn't act according to his own will. 
even though he wanted to do something on his own, well, he couldn't because he was controlled by what the demons dictated. If you are but demon possessed like shamans they are unable to do what they want they have to listen and run errands for the for demons because a characteristic of demons is that they never lead humans to beneficial direction in the passage the man possessed by demons was harming himself by striking his body with stones he was harming himself it, that means that when one is possessed by demons, they feel no pain. I witnessed this when I was the president of the young adult department. I was at church all the time at 11 p.m. until 2 a.m. I would pray at church and 10 or more young adults would come together. Every night at 11 p.m. we'd come to church, we'd praise, we'd pray and, and then we'd go into personal prayer until the early morning prayer. And then one day someone made a request there was this one person that came to us and he said oh my mom is going crazy can you please help us and so you know he was running around trying to look for help and he heard singing of uh, uh, hymns and so he asked us to come with with him and she was a, a lady who who had a store that made traditional clothing but she was completely demon, demon possessed and had gone crazy and then a grandfather grandfather demon had possessed her and then she was calling her husband and her husband had to kneel before him and so we started singing hymns and we sung, sung hymns so that the demon may be cast out and then they asked us to come again and so we went again and so she had wrapped something with paper and so she she said oh and then she she opened up the paper and said, "Oh, we have a special guest." And then I saw two bones in that was wrapped in inside the the paper. And, she, and I asked him, "What was what?" I asked the husband, "What what was that bone?" And then she said that she had she had cut her pinky finger open and then took out two bones from her finger and wrapped it in paper. But she didn't feel any pain because she was demon possessed. If you're demon possessed, even if you were to pick out your own bones, it doesn't. She doesn't feel any pain, and that was quite chilling. If you're demon possessed, that's how they harm their own bodies, and they feel no pain. In the as a result, in the end, she did end up accepting Jesus Christ and coming to church. But if you look at today's passage, the man who was demon possessed was so strong that no chains could. Bind, bind him when I was young there was a, a house a couple of blocks down there was a shaman that was demon possessed and that lady was always surprised when they saw us because you know she, uh, whenever we saw her she, we'd be shocked because she would she would hold a big bamboo branch a very very big bamboo branch and she would just run around with it with one hand and it that's how much if you're demon if you're demon possessed people become so strong that they can't manage all that power and strength and so there was this young lady that was there was a young girl who was demon possessed and even she was even though she was young and small I couldn't control her because she was so strong so likewise this this person that was demon possessed in the passage he even though even though he was changed, he would he would break the shackles, and nothing could put not, nothing could subdue him. The reason I say this is because so that you may know that demons are spiritual entities. No one is responding to this. The demons stop you from saying anything. You must say amen. Are you afraid? Demons are spiritual entities. Do they exist? Yes, they do. They are spiritual entities. In verse 9 of the passage, when Jesus asked the demon-possessed man for his name, he said, My name is Legion. The reason was that there were many demons in that one person. The word Legion in Greek refers to a Roman legion of 6,000 Roman soldiers. And so in this one man was many 
demons that had come into him and so he was unable to live a normal life so he had to live in the tombs he couldn't live a normal life because a legion was inside him that many demons had seized this man of garrisons and so the situation was truly grave in the passage demons always seek vengeance when it comes to demons they're always plural they're more than one it's only Satan the head who is a single entity but demons are plural entities but originally both Satan and demons were angels however they rebelled in an attempt to exalt themselves like God and but then they that resulted in judgment and they were cursed and they were driven out to this earth Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 12 specifically reveals this fact it said that there was a great war in heaven and the dragon and his angels were defeated by Michael and his angels so they were defeated by Michael and his angels and then they were ultimately expelled Revelation 12 9 says and the great dragon was thrown down that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan the deceiver of the whole world he was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him here the angels thrown down with Satan are the demons Satan was the head of the angels and all those who followed him were demons and Satan and demons will be temporarily active until Jesus' return. Matthew 8.29, which contains the same content as today's passage, a man possessed by demons shouts to Jesus, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to term torment us before the time? Their active period is only until Jesus returns again. It is until the Jesus' second coming. And when Jesus returns as the judge, they will forever be trapped in the abyss in hell. And so they were asking Jesus, that time has not come, and yet why are you here? Because for them, they needed to be active until that time, but they were asking Jesus why he had already come. The reason I explain these Bible verses so accurately to you is so that you may clearly understand the spiritual reality of demons. When someone is demon-possessed, they hate others because that's not the heart that the Holy Spirit gives to give to give scars others, to have unbelief, to hate others. A heart that is always pitted against someone else, those are all whispers of demons. If that's you, then you have to come to your senses quickly. Why do I hate someone? Why do I not like that person? Why do I want to fight with that person? It's because demons are at work. In the name of Jesus Christ, may all the evil and unclean spirits in me completely be bound. You need to proclaim that. Use it. You're deceived your entire life, and if you don't admit it, then you will live a pitiful life life for the rest of your life let us fight a spiritual battle because there is a spiritual reality we must fight a spiritual battle you, that is the right of a child of God unbelievers don't know this especially in this age not many cases are not as noticeable and visible as the garrison demon possessed man however there are many who are spiritually afflicted and struggling long ago there were people like the Gerasene demon possessed man where they, who were out of their minds who would run around naked and there are many crazy people back then on the streets and so but where did they all go they were all imprisoned because people were ashamed nowadays we don't really have beggars because you know they've all enclosed them somewhere if you go to America there are many homeless people and drug addicts on the streets in Europe as well many of them are on the streets but for Korea they all they are all inside mental institutions and mental institutions they're too, so packed these days they're all in there nowadays 
But the, the strange fact is that there are more serious problems in elite households. They have wealth, fame, and power, but it's all wrapped on the outside, but they actually, in reality, suffer from various hidden problems. They are directly afflicted with the 12 spiritual problems. It's all hidden and concealed. They're all afflicted with these spiritual problems. Because their identity is children of the devil, they're bound to worship the devil because they have no power. Because people are unaware of this spiritual reality, they seek answers from shamans who are demon-possessed themselves. There is not a single shaman who wanted to be a shaman, but without any choice, uh, they were demon-possessed, and they, their lives were at threat, and now they have, they're have running errands for the devil. And nowadays, as new as a new year begins, many TV entertainment programs broadcast content about New Year fortune, as if it's a annual event or entertainment. If you go to famous regions like Busan, there are many, many shamans and fortune telling uh, stories. all down the street and people and young adults are lined up there whether they do it seriously or just for fun because they want to see their fortune they go before a fortune teller and they ask for answers even nowadays with the upcoming april general general elections there's a lot of shamans making youtube videos predicting the election outcome and And many candidates frequently consult fortune tellers asking them for their results as well. I hope that candidate, Kim, you don't do that. I see that you come to church often. I hope that you don't do that. I know that you've never done that before, but many politicians do that. Even Adolf Hitler, who plunged the world into terror, is said to have had five famous fortune tellers by him. Whether east or west, north or south, people live a life seized by the ones who wield the power of the air and the evil spirits of the sky. And so what happens to a life that's seized by those evil spirits? There's nothing beneficial there. In John 10.10, Jesus says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. This refers to Satan and evil spirits who are a thief. They come into your heart and they plant hatred, jealousy, so you may fight and be pitted against each other. That's all uh, hearts and thoughts that Satan gives you. Initially, it may seem like what the shamans say comes true, but what happens to the result? Why did the IMF come to Korea? Because shamans had said that we should completely go all in to a certain industry. But then that, in the end, led Korea to bankruptcy. And so in our, in our church, there are many specialized church, there is a specialized church for shamans. And if you meet them and have forums, you'll come to understand the spiritual reality. And if you want to come to the field and look at the shaman field, You can come with us. And you'll see that the spiritual reality. But what's important is that you need to really be prepared and spiritually armed. If a shaman looked at you, they, they can tell right away. What do they say? What will you do if they look at you and they say, you don't believe, do you? That would be embarrassing. What if they say, look at you and they say, you don't believe, why do you come all the way here? When I first pioneered my church, We'd, I'd be at church at, until 2 a.m. in the morning and we had a special conference each night. There was this one demon person, demon possessed person, but that demon wouldn't, wouldn't be driven out and it was making me go crazy because I, you know, it was when we first pioneered the church, so whoever comes to our church, we need to heal them. So there was this demon possessed man and we were praying in the name of Jesus Christ to cast out that demon. But the associate pastors who were there with us, they were all really tired in the early morning. And so I was, 
you know, I was praying in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. But then my associate pastor, he was so tired that he, you know, he was falling asleep and he said, be cast out. But then at that time, he kicked the associate pastor. And so the associate pastor was kicked by a, a child who was demon possessed at that time. What that meant was, you don't believe. The demons knew. May all believers of Yewon Church open your eyes wide to see the spiritual reality of the field. And become become those who save the souls wandering due to various spiritual problems and there are those like people there are those individuals who are who are unable to receive grace and who are unable to receive the word you need to come to your senses may you not be deceived may you become absolute disciples of Christ who save those individuals Number two, the passion to save one soul. Verses 6 to 8 reads, And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God. Do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. As soon as Jesus appears, the demons reveal their identity themselves out of discomfort. But look at the expression they use. It's quite astonishing. What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Jesus, Son of the Most High God. The term Son of God is used when referring to the divine Christ. A demon-possessed man said, Son of God, how do they know the name of Jesus Christ? And so in other words, who are demons? They knew who that Jesus is, the Christ. The disciples, the disciples who followed Jesus, even they did not fully understand this. But the demons knew who Jesus is immediately. It should be well understood through the passage that merely knowing who Jesus is does not solve the problem. Because even the demons, they knew who Jesus was. Especially, demons cannot be present where Jesus is present. And therefore, wherever Jesus went, he cast it out and drove out demons. Even a, and so 2,000 years ago, wherever Jesus went, there were many people who were sick and there was regions of darkness. But wherever he went, wherever Jesus went, he drove out demons. First John 3, 8 states, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Why did Jesus come? To destroy the devil. Jesus Christ, who is the light of life, the moment he comes, darkness is bound to retreat. Darkness is bound to all retreat. Of course, it does not mean that that being disappears. It will remain active until the day the Lord returns. That is why we must be spiritually awake. We need to be spiritually awake and use the amazing identity and authority that God has given to His children. Matthew 10, 1, Luke 9, 1, and Mark 3, 15, as Jesus sends the disciples to the field, He says that He had given them the authority to cast out demons. When I first pioneered my church, even when I was an elder, and even though I was born out of a Christian family, I didn't know that I had the authority to cast out demons. I didn't even know that culture. I didn't know anything. But when a demon-possessed man come, I didn't know what to do. And when I looked at the four Gospels, I saw that Jesus had driven out demons. So I commanded them in the name of Jesus Christ, and I cast out demons. At that moment, I didn't even believe whether these demons would be driven out. But when they, I saw that demons were driven out in the name of Jesus Christ, it surprised me. I was surprised. Oh, they are driven out. That's how much it was. 
Because in the name itself of Jesus Christ, there is power. Even though, even if I didn't believe wholeheartedly, when I said the name of Jesus Christ, they were cast out. We have ordained deacons here. When they didn't come to our church, there was a, a one of a, the mothers of the ordained deacons was demon possessed and have and had seizures. And so they called us and said, "Oh, their mother was is demon possessed." And so we told him, "Say, say in the name of Jesus Christ, for the demons to be cast out." And so that that even though he didn't even come to church that often, he kept saying, "In the name of Jesus Christ, may the all the demons and evil spirits in my mother be cast out." And after five hours, the demons were cast out. And so that's how he he came to church and he became an ordained deacon, Deacon Han. That's the testimony he gave. All he did was speak the name of Jesus Christ, and even though your faith may be small, demons are cast out because the name itself has power. It's not because I'm prepared. No, it's because when you proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, demons are bound to be cast out. If there are some strange people wherever you go, in the name of Jesus Christ, if you command all the demons and evil spirits to be cast out, they're bound to be cast out. We have been given that authority. And that's how we overcome the world. The name of Jesus, in all the fields, in the, the, the name of Jesus is proclaimed, all darkness is bound, and the kingdom of God comes upon that place. In today's passage, the demons that came out of the madman of Gerasenes entered a large herd of nearby pigs, and about 2,000 pigs were drowned by jumping into the sea. We don't exactly know why God killed the pigs. Uh, but I think the I think when Jesus commanded the legion, the demons to come out of the man men to come out, I think the 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 evil spirits went into the pigs and the pigs went crazy and drowned itself. But what we, we must look at are is the people's reaction in the region. Their request to Jesus was for Jesus to leave their region. Why? Because they had lost their possession of 2,000 pigs, so they asked Jesus to leave the region. Because of the miracle that Jesus performed, they couldn't say anything further, but if Jesus was to stay there, they feared that they might experience loss continuously, so they simply asked Him to leave the region. They had no interest in saving a single soul. And the sad thing is that they completely kicked away the opportunity to be saved. Why? Because it's Genesis 3, 6, and 11. They were bound by self-materialism and success-centeredness, and so they couldn't distinguish what the important priority was. If you do not receive grace, then you can't distinguish and discern what is what is the spiritual priority? Even now, people are obsessed with their with their honor, feeling, and possessions, and because they're so centered on that, they can't see other things. They're not interested in saving souls. Many poor souls are conflicted and are suffering, but they don't have the heart to think of that. We must never lose the importance of each soul and the schedule of salvation for each soul, just as jo Jesus showed us. We're now entering into the field with this very heart of Jesus. The Bone and Flesh Evangelism Team, which was newly established in 2024, it's currently active, and they're traveling to all corners of the country during the week to witness the gospel. I receive reports of changes in the field. Uh, the targets are various including unbelieving parents, grandparents, children, and even former divorced husbands. The people are requesting them to go and visit them to have them hear the gospel, and actual real fruits are coming into bearing. There was this one grandson who saw his grandfather who seemed like he would never believe in Jesus, except my grandfather's acceptance is as big an event as the splitting of the Red Sea. It was a big event as the Red Sea. God's living works are taking place in the fields 
when, Jesus, when God sees our church, I'm sure He's pleased. And so let us put the name of Jesus' life in all regions of the world. Isn't that our conscience? That we, we shout two through seven nations and 5,000 people groups, but then if we don't share the gospel to the nearby regions, does that make sense? Domestic, the, so the saving souls in domestically and internationally. Of course, there are many people who break their promises to meet even if they make a long way down to save them. But despite of that, the Bone and Flesh Evangelism team remains unchanged and wherever church members request them, they go wherever that region is. They take on this challenge passionately. Don't hesitate to apply. And if you have any relatives or family members who are, are not believers yet, then may you contact us. The important thing is not to lose the importance of a single soul, like Jesus did, to save that one madman of Gerasenes who lived among the tombs. To save him, Jesus crossed the Sea of Galilee. He cro crossed the Sea of Galilee, he saved that man, and then he crossed back to the other side to save that one person. He faced a windstorm to save that one person. We must have Jesus' passion to save lives and go into the field. This is the conclusion. Well-known British evangelical ev Evangelical theologian Reverend John Stott compared an unbiblical church to a bus. He said, look inside the bus. Look inside the bus. The driver is fidgeting and focusing all his energy on driving the bus. But look at the passengers. They're crossing their arms. Some are sleeping. They're talking. They're doing something else. That is what an unhealthy church looks like. This is the reality of world churches and the Korean church. That's why we have negative growth and churches are decreasing. When the church sets a direction and moves forward, if the church sets a direction and the members do not move forward, then all churches will crumble and close down. It's been 150, it hasn't been even 150 years since the gospel has come into our, our, our nation. And so there is no salvation other than Jesus just because you did good works. Back then, back then, if because they, the gospel did not come in, then everyone would have just passed away without knowing the gospel. You may say, oh, at that time, no one told us the gospel, and so we just had to work, live according to our conscience. No, that's why the, it is urgent for the gospel to be proclaimed to the ends of the earth. It's not something that you may or may not do. It's not something that should be based on your feelings and emotions or based on your circumstances and environment. When, a, when the church sets a direction, for our church, all church members and believers must come together passionately and become one. Our church truly has hope. We are going all in and concentrating on the team of three and three movements. Our church is unfolding. So may the blessing of saving become 24 hours in your life. Oh, I may not, when you meet one individual, may you have the acceptance movement where you think, oh, I may not see this person ever again, so I must share the gospel to this individual. May you live a life that leaves behind a 25-hour and eternal life masterpiece. Let us pray. Father God, may you bless all believers of Yewon Church that they may not worry about what to wear, eat, or drink, and waste their lives for the worldly things like other unbelievers in the world, but may they have the heart to to desire to save one soul and may, may they be able to realize how moving and deeply important it is to save one soul and may they listen to the public message and in their fields become field evangelism disciples may as their soul is well may all things go well and may they receive 
Amsters and their ministries. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.